Christmas. Also today, Li Jia Zhang's grandmother revealed to her on her deathbed that she'd been forced into prostitution. The author will tell us about the novel that experience inspired. That's all coming up here on Impact. What does a country's sex industry tell us about the state it's in? That's one of the questions raised in Lotus, a debut novel by Beijing author and journalist Li Jia Zhang. Lotus is about prostitutes in the steamy southern city of Shenzhen, the Chinese city that's just north of Hong Kong. Many of the working girls are migrants from rural villages. Some have started with factory work, but then slide into the often more lucrative world of sex for money. Well, Li Jia Zhang's novel lifts the lid on what that world is really like. And Li Jia herself has had quite a life, starting work at 16 in a factory that produced intercontinental missiles, teaching herself English, studying here and in America, and now she's based in Beijing as a journalist and social commentator. But I'm glad to say she's here now. Thank you, Li Jia, for coming to the studio. Thank you for having me, Philippa. Well, I want to start with what inspired the novel, an extraordinary revelation about the grandmother you thought you knew so well. Uh, yes, I always quick to point out this is not a nano memoir. It's, <laughs> it's uh, not a nano memoir based on personal experience, but uh, there was a connection. So, uh, in, really, in, as you mentioned, in front of my grandma's deathbed, my mother mentioned that my grandmother was a prostitute in her youth, and I was shocked. And then my mother explained that uh, my grandmother became an orphan, and then I was adopted by her aunt. And then when she grew into a young woman. Um, the uncle, the husband of the aunt, sold her into a prostitution. So ever since then, I've become, you know, fascinated with prostitution as I kept wondering what my grandma's life was like. So that's and how. And then you were able to investigate more as a journalist, not just in Shenzhen, but you have actually met and interviewed working girls in different areas of China, yeah? Exactly. And I, for me, I, may, I, I think uh, working as a journalist, so once a journalist, always a journalist. And for me, prostitution touches upon some most important issues facing China today, like a migration, like a rural-urban divide, like growing income gap between men and women, and um, moral decline, and, you know, tug of war between tradition and modernity. So that's why I'm so interested. I'm of course, the personal part because of the uh, personal connection. So I interviewed many girls in Shenzhen, Dongguan, which is a neighboring city. Dongguan is where we're seeing pictures now, I think, of in fact a sweep of some of the vice areas. Yes, yeah, so no, you've yes, been yes, there. yes, I, I, I um, been there many times, and I, I interviewed women in uh, uh, Shenyang, um, in the northeast, in kind of industrial rusty belt. Uh, quite a few of the working girls were. Uh, let off workers. So I and also I worked as a volunteer for NGO and trying to help female sex workers. Now your book, Lotus, the 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 girl in your book, she starts trying to work in a factory. Yes. She finds it's easier to get the money she wants for her family by working as a prostitute. And do you mm -hmm. think that's often the case that this is a trade where young women can make money? and they send a lot of money back to their families who might not know what they're doing. Yes, and um, I think uh, contrary to many people somehow thought of the lots of prostitutes working in China were trafficked or forced into it. I would say majority of women enter the trade on their free will, but were often obliged by some unfortunate circumstances. For example, um, uh, being dumped by husband, uh, losing that, having lost a job, somebody failing ill or failing for the wrong man, like Lotus case, something gone wrong. But of course, there's a temptation of money as well. Quite a few uh, uh, sex workers I interviewed, they coming from the poor area, coming to the city to work, and they work at the production line. And one of the friends got a job as, um, you know, um, uh, massage parlor and such a places. The pay was much better and the life was easier. So. And for some girls or women who go into the industry, mm. some then actually do gain their economic independence. I think a point you were making is, it's miserable. You can be raped, you can be exploited, but for some, 
it's their trade and they make a lot of money. Exactly, and I, you know, they are three-dimensional human beings. And I keep saying this is really not an easy life. I mean, especially in China, you know, they are often subject to police harassment. You know, though, um, but they, um, but their life is not total, total misery either. And some of them do feel uh, empowered by the money. For example, almost all of them send the money home. That improves the relationship with their husband, with their family, and make them more active. And some of them also enjoy what the city can offer, starting trying different foods and, and you know, jam on toast, you know, things like that. And when we started talking, you said you were interested in all these contradictions about modern China, one of which is there have been boom times, but quite often it's been harder economically for women. They can be the first to lose jobs or to feel vulnerable Ab in the absolutely, new China. Absolutely, yes. There are many reasons why prostitution has become such a massive industry. I would say probably 10 million work people working there in the, in the sex industry. And the reason for that, they are really complex, you know, growing wealth, China and economy developing so fast, and relaxed social control. And I think uh, China for many, you know, for a long time was repressed. Now this, you know, relaxed control, uh, growing wealth, this uh, growing hedonistic tendency. Um, so, but another reason is this, uh, the income between men and women also growing. And a market economy, I would venture to say, has undermined the gender inequality because Women have shouldered most of the burden and cost as China shift from the planned economy to the market economy. Um, for example, women are the first to let off. I worked at a Misa factory I know, uh, some 10 years ago. The factory, my work unit, the, there was a uh, rule say all the women above 45 years old being let off. And they can just do that. Um, just do that. I'm also yeah. fascinated, some of this comes out in the novel, about the way the industry is treated. Because it's illegal. Prostitution it is, is Ill illegal. Ill illegal in China. Every aspect of it, from solicitation to buying to selling, or illegal, yes. And yet, it makes money, um, it's used as part of business deals sometimes. There's a bit of a nod and a wink. The, the women can be treated very unfairly, but but they're also known to exist. Yes, it is. I mean, I think this is a funny thing about China. You know, on one hand, you don't read about it. And if, some, if you know about prostitutes, it was a crackdown. The government looked at them through the lens of the crime. And um, there is prostitution is illegal and regarded as one of the six social evils, you know, together with gambling, prostitution, or the, uh, sorry, gambling, drug abuse. Um, they, they have a, a tough time. They should be treated as kind of a uh, prostitution it dealt with uh, administrative law, not criminal law, but uh, local, you know, police often kind of uh, uh, taking the opportunity to squeeze money out. Yeah, they, they, yeah. they take the bribes, don't yeah. they? Do you think it should be legalized? Is there a case for that? I think as long as China calls itself a socialist country, that's not possible. But I do hope, many experts hope, that uh, China would decriminalize it. For example, we have this uh, law called uh, custody and education, which can send women to, from six months to two years in custody, ex custody and education in a detention center. That just gives too much leeway because there's no uh, proper legal procedure and there's no lawyer's involvement. There's too, too much leeway for police abuse and corruption. Just a very final thought. Do you think there are a lot of families who won't know it, but they're being kind of held together by money from the sex work industry? Exactly. So all the girls, they never work in the same region. They work another city and they send the money home, they're telling their family they got a grand job working as a salesperson and so on. But I'm really touched by the dedication. It's, the, uh, it's a way to show filial piety and also, it's an, um, also something make them feel better. Nijia, great to talk to you. I enjoyed reading your book. I'm Thank so you glad very to hear much. that. Thank, Thank you. And do stay with us here on BBC World News. Still to come.